and introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Laferrin Joseph. Everyone calls me Sister Farron, and I want to give you some information about the Underground Railroad in Peekskill. First of all, there were many freedom seekers that came through Peekskill. They came up by land, they came up by boat, rowboat, they came up by foot. And they made their way here, and they would come up by way of the Hudson, and they would follow an area called McGregor's Brook that would bring them wading in the water all the way up into the middle of town. And I will show you, this is part of the area that they walked through. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it was under brush, as you can see. So, and they would come most of the time at night so that no one would see them. So, and I'll show you where it began. What is that? Peekskill was an iron ore town. They made potbelly stoves here, mm -hmm. and they made um, plows here. The plows that they used in the south on the plantation. Okay, so it's, a, it's really interesting. Anyway, so there were a lot of ships in here. So at night, if somebody came up, and even if they were walking in between the ships, it was late, it was dark, nobody saw them. But many times, they went through by the waterway because if the slave catcher came with the dogs, he couldn't smell them. Mm -hmm. So, got a lot of rabbits and pasta out here. So anyway, I'll show you. Imagine, all that's a waterway. All of that's a waterway, and it is really all through here. Look at that. Look at that. Mm -hmm. that brings you all the way to town. Okay, I'll give you a better view over here. You can see much better how they came. And how long have you been running the Underground Railroad tours here? <laughs> Since 1997. Okay. Oh wow, you could barely see. Wow, because of all the brush that's built up. Mm -hmm. But they would come. You see, New York is that way. Okay. So I left. Mm -hmm. When you are coming up and you see the water line, the water. Where, uh, where the land is, mm -hmm. where it would come up to the land. Peekskill is the only one that juts in, then goes back out before it goes up. So again, the waters were higher. You had the ships here. Mm -hmm. You had the, you know, they were uh, sending and building those, those, those stoves and those plows. And you had freedom seekers coming right through here. They would get on that train, they was rowing, they was walking, and they was making it. Mm -hmm. And they got up here. And then they were welcomed with a myriad of places. The AME Zion Church, the, um, that was built in 1852 by free blacks. Mm -hmm. Then you had um, 1112 Main Street that was a house owned by Harley Green, well-known abolitionist. Um, and then there was this also. He was African American. He was African American. Mm -hmm. Him and his wife Harriet. Mm -hmm. And then there was also Henry Ward Beecher, who had his summer home here, along mm -hmm. with um, his sister Harriet Beecher Stowe, who had her own cottage summer home on the same land because he owned all of that land. This, this, this McGregor's Brook goes all the way up to his land. I will show you. Mm. It's amazing it's you know and and there were many other places mm -hmm. that they were able to hide at but you know what's interesting about Peekskill is that Henry Ward Beecher was here you had um, the Pew Chauncey who was here you had Seward's son who had given Harry Tubman that land mm -hmm. who was here mm -hmm. so when um, Abraham Lincoln was politicking to become president he only stopped two places in new york state guess where peak skill and buffalo now tell me is that ain't that a connection <laughs> see what i'm saying right so you know we've been connecting the dots and really you know um finding written things about harley green the the african-american and his wife they talk about him being an abolitionist in a book 
written by Colin Naylor. Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, my country, Countryville, I, I can't remember the exact name of it, but I can let you know later. Mm -hmm. But it's, um, it's, it's wonderful because it's been documented. Mm -hmm. So the time period that freedom seekers were coming through here, what would be the time for 1830 to 1860? Yeah, around 1830 to 18, at least 1860. Okay, during the years of mm -hmm. the quote unquote Underground Railroad. Yes, yeah, they and were coming. And how many do you think came through? Ooh, so, plenty, but I, 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 I wouldn't know the number. numbers, yeah. No. Hard. That's how hard that's, to figure. That's, that's very hard to, but just to know that these people were here, because mm -hmm. you know, just down the line, in Terrytown, mm -hmm. Henry Ward Beecher has his, had a church. No, in Brooklyn, he had his church. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. had his church called Plymouth. When you come further up, there's an AME Zion church that has documentation that freedom seekers came through that church. Is AME Zion church. Yes. Totally and amazing. They used to hide out in Weeksville as well. Mm -hmm. It was part of that story. So that's part of that line mm -hmm. that was coming up this way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, what about Harriet Tubman's relationship? Do any any records or information about how many times she may have led groups through um, Peak Skill on her journey northwards? No, we're still documenting. Okay. We are still documenting as much as we can before the elders pass, because usually the elders mm -hmm. they'll give us a little snippet of something that they know, mm -hmm. and when we do research it, we find that it, it is in fact true. Mm -hmm. But it's to get into the elders because many of our elders have developed Alzheimer's and dementia, yeah. you know, so we've, we've been talking to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we get them. It's, it's, even those that have moved south, mm -hmm. we call them on the phone. So, so it's oral history that Harriet Tubman came through here. That's what you understand mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we have the connection with uh, the Puchanti and, and Nelson mm -hmm. and Seward and um, Abraham Lincoln and all those uh, uh, different people that came through here. Mm -hmm. We're just surmising that she did too. Okay. Okay, because there were too many people that she was connected to. Yes. That came right through here. Mm -hmm. And there were abolitionists, many abolitionists in the town of Peekskill. Mm -hmm. Amazingly so. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah. 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 There's a, a town in um, along the Delaware um, called Greenwich, and mm -hmm. there was an African American hamlet called Springtown, and um, it's the oral history from the uh, Nanticoke Lenny Lenape Indians that are there, mm -hmm. from the Quakers that are there, mm -hmm. from the African Americans that are there. That Harriet Tubman came through there, but there's no written documentation to prove it but they're all through oral history said so she came through here what they did find was that <clears throat> William Still's mother on her second trip um, escaping from freedom uh, after being caught came through Springtown nice. and then they settled upriver um, in Burlington County New Jersey Okay. So, um, wow. you know, you got to listen to that oral history. It's there. Sure, it's we there. Well, you, you know we couldn't write it down. Right, right. Exactly. I didn't want to get caught. So let's move on to the next. Okay. Sure.